All right, welcome back to another plane explain. In the last part, we were getting crushed in this session, so hopefully in this video we can go a bit better. I'm gonna be studying a lot after this, and when I go to the my other place here, you basically just don't really want to check back too often. I'm pretty sure on this type of board, like if you were to actually run it, almost all your hands hit, so you can just bet, and not all of his hands do. So yeah. And you have kind of the nut advantage, so generally when all those things are true, it doesn't mind betting it, especially on a rainbow board. That's the thing about the jack-eye board, it's like having two overs to a jack-eye board is pretty okay. Like I can't hand my king-queen, but on an ace-eye board, I hand my king-queen is pretty bad, so that's when you need to develop more of a check-back range. Because you actually do have misses, for example, on this board he's going to have a lot of misses. You can actually play a leading range here. I prefer not to versus the button. Maybe versus EP. Where you have like a drastic set advantage and stuff like this. In general, I don't mind overly raising these boards with people over. But he sizes up to half fault, which might be a little bit of a tell. The seven's neat, but this might just be overdoing it. Versus half fault, I could see myself just folding here. We're supposed to overfold. It's close, but I think we just fold. The ace not being a uh, oh, whatever kind of stinks for me. I would say on a really high number, I don't mind maybe just throwing some hands like this in. So I doubt it's pure folding. This is a little too early, but there's a lot of recreationals on this table, so I'm going to be opening a little wider. But uh, We're stuck like close to 3k or something right now, so let's hope we can get out of the hole. He finds the lead here. This is a board you're going to be leading on. We're going to be continuing. I'm raising at a pretty high frequency when your opponent's leading, but this hand we're just going to be calling. And on the river... I could see myself finding a bluff with this hand. It's close. The thing is, okay, what do we expect our bluffs to be, right? So we have like 7-9, 10-9. We don't really have 7-9, actually, what am I talking about? We have 10-9 of other suits, but the, that's even close to indifferent on turn. We have some worse 6-X, maybe? In general, I expect the spot to be overfolded, so I don't mind going for the overbet. Mainly due to the spot, the reason why I don't mind the overbet here is I just think we're going to have so many high spades as played, um, and we're perceived to have so many high spades, that going for the overbet there is just going to be drastically overfolded. So even though queen six could be a check back, um, I'd rather just overbluff the spot. As I, I'm going to have so much value, it might not even be an overbet. I wouldn't be surprised if that hands a bluff, to be honest. Also, I never supposed to have it actually in theory, so you got to think about what we're actually gonna have. Um, you could definitely turn this into a bluff here, but I guess we'll just go with the check. I mean, we we're still ahead of a good amount of his hands. I mean, we protect our range, and then we might get some worse hands to fold, like seven sixes and seven sixes and eights when we bet turn here. Maybe even some nine x's. People overfold. We actually would have got a value, but if he called fours, which is kind of funny. Same situation here. This hand could consider calling, but when there's an extra caller on the button, we're going to be a little more aggressive. Because the button basically is just putting free money into the pot when we three bet. On a two here, I guess we just let this go. Here, when he calls, we're going to check range here. Generally, a general rule is when your opponent has two sets or more, you just check range out of position versus caller. Uh, when he finds the check back here, I don't mind being a little bit aggressive with the king eight here. I expect a decent amount of his 10x to bet flop, but I don't know. I'm kind of rambling. I'm kind of yapping here. I don't know if this is actually the best line. I don't mind an overbet here. Actually, it's a reopen strategy in general as well. Okay, so he has like potentially jack sense and queens here. I think in general we're going to be pretty aggressive on this board. I think the bigger sizing is probably preferred. As we're going to be polar. I could consider checking back this one, honestly. We'll go for the check here. Generally, your weaker 10x, actually, though. This seems like a, an okay hand to bet. But I rolled really low, like a 28, so I don't mind. I don't mind going for the double check here, actually, with the king 10 here, now that we pick up the diamonds. I think, in general, if we have a hand that checks with diamonds, we're going to want to be betting this turn. So I think we can take a hand like this and check it. There's actually not that many bad rivers now. And I think we just call this hand just to uh, slow play. as our hand looks like ace-king. 
would suck if he rivered sevens. I don't really expect to be beat here too often, to be honest. An easy call on the river here. I'm gonna get that. Get the maximum. Sick. Huh. And uh, that's part of the reason why also the checking is okay, is uh, due to the fact that you keep your opponent's king queen in. Granted, they're that handy and king queen of clubs, which is obviously pure calling. So, it's, yeah. And here, when we like tank this long, I guess we can check. I was going to overbet. I think this hand is a, a pretty good overbet candidate with the deuce being a diamond as well, especially. Um, this one's probably okay. Double check though. Gonna be just calling the tens here. Could four bet sometimes. But yeah. On the river here, just going for the bet here. When he sizes up here, I think we can just fold our tens. So it looks like we're making some <laughs> some of the lost money back. Um, some interesting hands in the studio. We'll go over some of them. This hand in general is a pretty good hand 2-3 bet. I think it's a little too EP though. In this case, PFR is 12, so. Granted, it's through a very small sample, but if you're going to take a mix here, you'd rather assume one or the other. And right now, I have reason to believe he is on the tighter side when it's when you're dealing with the recreational. My light blue tag is recreational. Some some people I have tagged incorrectly recreational. Some I do it as a bit of a joke. They might be a reg and I tag them as a fish, probably because I was just mad once. So if you're a reg watching this video and I have you tagged fish, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> but uh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, the light blue tag is a fish tag. Um, like for example, this, actually I shouldn't say the, the regs that are fish, but it's pretty easy to assume. Generally the people rebuying, opening consistently, playing normal V-pips are going to be probably regs that I just have jokingly tagged this fish. And in general, yeah. Oh, so we have Jarrett Man here, he left as well. Looks like we got some games breaking. This game is not a very good game. I might actually leave due to the, the fact that I am down swinging super hard today. Um, Giga rig battling a 1k, especially on GG Poker. If it was on Poker Stars, I'd be more inclined to stay. It's basically very hard for any of us to be beating this game for an insane win rate. That's not just taking up a certain amount of variance. Because if you have like a one big blind win rate in the game, I mean, you could go on a 300,000 downswing. So it's like 300,000 hand downswing or more. So it's like, why really? Bother. Go for the three, ace queen three bet because we are versus recreational, and I'm going to leave here. Yeah, because I'm not going to play heads up as well. Here's over better check for me. Um, we're gonna have to pick. You're gonna put some of the aces in your over betting range just to have all of them. There's not a single ace here supposed to be pure checking, though this one's pretty motivating to be. I mean, I could see on a 68 this being a bet, but we'll go for the check here in general. This end seems pretty good to check twice. And the river likely calling. I'm gonna prefer probably an overbet for my opponent though. And just checking the weaker ASX that the, he's got to the river with at this point. Maybe you could play a blocking strategy, probably a split strategy. I could see the solver playing. And obviously we go for the river bet. I think I will stick with four tables. I've made a lot of mistakes due to playing too many hands, so don't necessarily mind the idea of. Having a little less. If you're multi-way, I think in general you can... I mean, on this type of texture, I don't mind sizing up, though. We'll size up to one-third. The concept behind betting really small on, say, a drier texture, like ace deuce deuce or something, is let's say this guy's in, like, pocket sevens. He has to worry about this guy calling, so he actually is less incentivized to put in the, the money even with a middling hand. So here we have a gut shot, but we do have a spade. Jack 10 probably does call again, so it's okay. The 7 is a better card for between the two of them, so I'll go for the check here in this spot. But I don't mind, actually, if you really want it to be aggressive here. I would say the spot has zero bluffs in it. I'd say when they double check, though, I don't really expect anyone to have a hand that beats mine, so I'll go for the small, small reopen. I don't think anyone's really trapping the spot. Could be wrong, though. So here I check chip. I don't mind that.
multi-way, I don't know. A clue. I mean, I have a lot of logical reasons why things might be good, but... So we have Jaredman sitting. This game is not too good as well. Looks like he left because the fish left. Looks like a lot of people are also going to leave, so maybe I should be my... It should be my cue to leave as well. Uh, looks like there's another 1k that can include a Reeker player. <laughs> you got Ryan Risk and Jaredman at the steal. But I'll play it for the video. Might be losing in this 1k, to be honest, but... <sighs> At least it'll make good content. But is this guy a recreational? I won't leave, actually. You know what, I'll, I'll probably set this table. This, the fish is too short. And on GG Poker, I would advise to just not reg battle, to be honest. I think the idea of like reg battling is cool, and I am someone who definitely gravitates towards that style of poker. Um, but when the rate's so fucking high, if you're ever losing, you're really losing. Um, <laughs> so here, I think we just have to have a value bet with this hand. I think you could play a smaller size, but yeah, you can. You probably can call a six, a seven, whatever. I don't think it's trapped too often, is the thing. And I think in general, this is gonna be a spot we're attacking very aggressively with bluffs. So it makes sense to be value betting kind of thin. Could be wrong about that spot as well. This is an easy overbet with the ace queen here. I've been recording for 12 minutes. So I got the other video where I get absolutely destroyed to go over. And then I have this video. I could consider flooding if the. I think actually with the 7, I don't mind it. The issue is actually we kind of have to fold the sand versus raise. So I'll go for the check back. In the sense we have to fold the sand versus. We don't have to fold, but I don't think it performs too good when it bets and gets raised. I mean, blocking the 7 does block some of his raising range. And obviously now our hand is like no value. It had some potential theoretical value on the flop, but <laughs> the equity. <laughs> After that turn card, it's slashed pretty dramatically. In general, the games have just not been that good. That's why I'm trying to record, because if I'm going to reg battle, I prefer to uh, record, as when the games are pretty uh, uh, full with a lot of fish, that's when I prefer to... Uh, I would say on the spot, you don't mind just checking here. I mean, it's kind of face up because I feel like I range with the spot, but got to start somewhere. In general, I think this hand's going to be another check. The thing about this spot is it's like he has a lot of a6 as well. I don't mind maybe the lower king x though, maybe checking a hand that can queen to spades. Because uh, we can fold it some king 10 and all this other bullshit, right? On an 83, we can go with the 3 bet here. It's probably a little too low and here especially blocking some bluffs like potential six four hands six eight of spades yeah probably did the probably probably close here and looks like this guy's leaving i don't really know much about this guy i think he might be a tournament rig looks like all these games are breaking let me see if i can save my youtube video right here There's some things I think I wanted to talk about in these videos that I have not got to. I think I will try and have a video where I just explain everything while I play about all the things I'm trying to get going for me. Looks like this is just resorted to a heads up game. Where's me and Jedi again? Going for the 130 here. I, I, I'm a little understudied with some of these flop plays, but hopefully my next video after this one should be a lot better because I'm going to be trying to just really Review a lot of these spots and probably not record tomorrow. Just 
review a lot of these spots, and yeah. On this spot, you just want to be aggressive, and I think the Sand's good enough to be aggressive with heads up. You can even, uh, probably play the overbet strategy. Gonna go for a bet here. In general, usually when the, an overcard comes off, it's not like the greatest card for my range, but... I think on a 62, this hand does 3-bet. Could bet this river. I mean, it's a river we want to bet a lot. It's a bluff. Like, we have a lot of bluffs here on this river. We block a hand like King 9 of Clubs, but I think in general people are a little tighter than they should be, so I'll go for the check. Wow, we lost to 10s. Imagine we got Hero called by 10s. Jesus. So in general here, you're going to be playing both, but I think when you have an actual pair on the board, it's kind of like a mini draw type hand, especially 8-7 when you have the lower version. Going to be checking this card now when the uh, 6 comes off. Going to be check calling. And then evaluating rivers. The good news about 8 is we block like a main portion of its value range, and I don't think King-Queen here would go so thin from him. Obviously could. And here going to be checking this river again. We obviously have the nuts, but... You can also block bet. I think in general, maybe some of his 7x bets turn. I think in this spot, I also just get bluffed into more. By some of his like 5x hands, maybe, and stuff like this. Nice. So my overall read on the spot, I think people are, uh, I think this is a spot where we're going to want to block pretty aggressively. Um, I, I don't know, I guess my logic in theory is I could see it not being a block spot because you're probably supposed to check and just defend, but I think in practice it just really pisses people off when you block into them on this type of node, where they just have such a good hand so often. So it really just gets people to over bluff into you. I'm not saying this, this guy's a great player, but I just felt like it would work. I think sometimes also the important thing in poker is you can have an edge on people who are better than you based off the way you're perceived. Because you're basically they're exploiting you and they misread you. Though I will say I don't I don't think he lost that much EV by bluffing that hand on that spot, if any. Um, he he doesn't have too much showdown and it's a spot that's probably overfolded in general. So anyway, I'm gonna be leaving this. This might be a little bit shorter of a video. Let me see if I can. I actually don't know if I'm grooming him here. I just played my blinds and now I play my butt in. I don't really know how it works, but I'm pretty sure this is not a grim, right? I'm um, in general here, the ace not being art kind of stinks for me, so I'm just going to go with the fold here. Uh, probably could call in position, but it is what it is. This is the spot where you're going to be betting small here, so I'll go with this. In general, you can be betting some weirder types of hands. I'm going to be checking back here. We can get some value from some middling flush X hands, but diamonds, but... That's what I meant to say, some offshoot diamonds, because he has a lot of them. Um, and we kind of have a, a little bit of a mergey holding here. This one's kind of close. I think in general, the thing is we have to call so often. And we have a lot of air, because we're, we're betting one big one a lot on the flop. I actually don't mind just the call here in general. Um, yeah. So he just has the Giga Nuts. All right, I'm going to leave next blind. I gave him enough money. Probably over over calling that spot, but yeah. On this hand, mostly folding, I think, some frequency for betting. It looks like I can get in one more 1K, though. We can play some three, three-handed. Probably make this video go for 30 minutes and then put in a study session. I do have to kind of go somewhere. I hope the quality of the video is decent. Looks like my overlay is kind of screwing up, though. Whatever, we'll have a bigger 1K. It makes sense, right? Um, not a 35 here, I guess I'll just let this go UTG. This guy just kind of over 3-bet, though, so I don't mind being a little more aggressive. But for the video, I stay standard. Would have been a good flop, though. So I think in this video, I kind of show the EV so far of playing your hand. Play, like, versus good opponents, when you play your hand for its actual strategy and not just like your range strategy overall, you can actually know you a lot of EV. I think the key is to actually understand who you're playing versus. And when you're playing versus a really good rig, I think in general, sometimes doing the correct play, like 
uh, protecting your checking range and doing the X, Y, and Z that other rigs aren't willing to do will net the players who are beating those rigs to make mistakes versus you. I don't know if that makes sense. But... And I, th I see some people, the issue is they, they run into this issue where first they're too often they get too attached to looking at sims and doing all of this stuff that they just misplay versus players who are not going to be capitalizing off of it in general. I would say the players who are actually putting you in tough spots all the time, you need to start reevaluating the types of holdings you're going to have in these certain spots because they're exploiting you, probably. And by being unexploitable in a way versus people who are used to exploiting, you actually make more money in general. Queen 7, I think, actually does sometimes. But actually, no. I think it's just in that middling spot where it's just too good. Like, I know Jack 8 suited is can call, but okay, here. I think you're just generally pretty aggressive when you bet again, and I don't mind checking this hand. It's a close, but I think you want to build around like the five and the deuce, and maybe at least have diamonds. We'll go for the check again. Y you can't be doing anything wrong with checking a hand like this twice. No equity again, just going to be checking. I think we just give up this one. Could do a lot of things on this river. Kind of need a rep river two pair. I'm trying to think what my bluffs would be on this load. And I think if you just roll it in an insanely high number, you could probably just take anything. In a, in a spot where you like really think about it for a while and you can't think of a bluff, um, what I recommend doing is stop overriding your blockers. I mean, you can make an exploit, like, is he overfooling or not? I have no clue what this guy's doing here. So you could stop looking at your blockers and literally just go, okay, if I roll the 90, I'm just going to bluff. Because then I, that can be that can be my... All the random error I have with my value can just be my bluffs in general. Um, here, I prefer probably having a little bit of a pair, though, in case he had a hand like... The thing is, does he have 10 first suited? I don't know. The 10 is kind of nice, but the 10 just rather call is the issue. So I don't think, yeah. These three, I think it's like the bottom. And uh, it's not far about buffing, though, too often. The tank four bet. This hand's just mostly calling here. I can't remember. I think this is mine versus mine, right? And we're going to go for the call here. Holy... Wait, if he has aces, we can hit Bappy Jackpot right here. Ace. Don't really see the point of betting this hand. You basically don't want to keep all of your opponent's hands in. That sucks. Could have raised flop. I think we'll go for the check call twice, though. I think here we're just going to go for the bluff here. And I like actually the bigger size here. Because you can you can rep like a straight that turned. And some two pair. You don't need to go too big. Maybe like this. Six five suited any good here? He's four but six five suited pre. I was wondering why he took so long. I mean I think it's an okay hand to call with. I mean, I don't get why he bet River, though. And I don't think it's a 3-bet at this, this stack depth. He's still up versus me today. I like to go for the faster bet, because I think the tank is just too long. I'm going to type in accidentally full aces or something. Alright, anyway, how long have I been recording for? 24 minutes. I, wouldn't, I don't know how good this video is in general. The good news is we're seeming to make some of our money back. It looks like this might be a winning video. I think overall losing session, though. I got murked in the last one. Oh, when two people call, um, you could actually... No, I don't think this is actually a spot where you forbid this hand. I think maybe this, these two positions is a spot, and maybe these two. <laughs> so 
Six five suited. The issue with six five suited, not accessible. D bird's okay. The issue is when your opponent's gonna be shoving on you a lot. In general, you you want some good blocker properties when you uh, three bet bluff. I mean four bet bluff. And the SPR is not relevant enough for like six five suited like to counter net equity to be that worth it. Because you're basically just looking to crack hands. Um that are probably gonna shove on you anyway. So just logically if you think about it right, like okay, so it's like, oh, if I if my opponent has jacks, I can crack him with the six five suited. But if he has jacks, he's probably shoving on you at a very high frequency. So it's like if he has ace king, he's shoving at you at a very high frequency. So you pretty much want an ace or a king. Um sometimes uh, jack ten suited and ten nine suited do get in there though. But I would say that's about it. And that's mainly to fold out these types of hands like Queen Ten suited. Actually, yeah, I think Queen Ten suited's mixing. Ace nine suited. Ace ten ace ten off. Stuff like this. And that's just to have a little bit more coverage. Because you will find you definitely need the coverage. You can't just have... Because then you end up realizing you, almost all your hands then include an ace or a king. And it just becomes really predictable to play versus you. On boards with an ace or a king on it, you basically just have no bluffs. This hand in general is a call. At this deep of a stack depth, I'm going to have to read the people under 3 bit bluff the spot. Um, and I don't think super deep in all suit hand becomes less appe it becomes less appealing compared to a hand like ace 8 suited. To four bit bluff. I'm gonna be folding this now. I'm gonna be wrapping up the video in like four minutes. I do have to do all this stuff before I go see my amazing girlfriend. <laughs> so yeah. That is what I will be doing. I'm gonna size up here deeper. Um twenty is probably enough over six point one. I think in theory you're supposed to go bigger, but I want this fish to call some of these worse hands. And in general I don't mind betting once here for a decent sizing to get some of these weirder hands out of there. And now probably just checking and losing. I think we could have checked flop. I actually regret with the suited hand not checking flop. But yeah. Hopefully get to see a river. And we do just break out. I mean, he might have some ace jack here. He could have some king jack as well. So. Yikes. He, so he called the four with Jackson off this deep. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> the jack would have been pretty nice. Anyway, let's see if we can not lose twice here with Ace King. Then the video. My last video was like about an hour or two videos ago. Um, this I think is mainly going to be in the folding range. Yeah. Queen six suited, mainly going to be calling. Especially with how. Harvey saw this guy just over defend. But yeah, I don't know if it's come out yet because I'm filming this on the 8th. But if you guys are interested, um, I should be soon getting my affiliate link for the solver program I use, um, which is the one I've been using forever. Um, and I can save you guys 10% off. And it should be in the description. It might not be there yet. Um, I'm trying to get it done. But they said they'd give me the link. And I just have to agree to something or something. On an 86, this will be good enough. And the overlay software I use. I have an affiliate link in the description as well. For my RNG and how I get six tables organized on the screen like this. Across multiple sites. So if you're looking to have a good way to use RNG without using a random number generator. It's free for micro six players. Um, yeah, in the description below should be there and should also save you 10% off on that as well maybe 20 I could be wrong probably 10 let's go with 10 so I don't lie to you guys and here I think we just want to be betting again pretty aggressively I'm gonna be wrapping up the video in a sec here though my poker brand has been a little off. I would say look out for the next video as I'm going to take a couple days off of recording and mainly focus on just upping my game in probably the more basic spots. I would say the reason I feel like I'm not playing too well is there's some spots that I just know I have better knowledge of than I have because I haven't, through Christmas and everything and putting out these videos for you guys, I've been pretty focused on just individual hand review, less overall broad spots. And there's some spots, mainly pre-flop, um, a lot of flop sizings and single raise pots and three bet pots that uh, I look to get a, a bit better at for you guys. Um, so I can probably give you guys, and that's probably the spot that I mainly are probably pretty beneficial from watching content. If you don't have to run a spot yourself on like, let's say queen five, three, button burst cutoff, and I can just tell you how to play that flop. I think it 
probably would help you guys out a lot, I imagine. So I'm going to be looking to just get the basics done. As if you can just learn pre-flop stuff from watching my videos and flop stuff, that's some stuff you can take away almost every video. Um, sometimes these in-depth spots are a little overrated. As If you do the basic little stuff right and you actually put a, a direct effort into correcting those things, um, you'll realize that you actually soon want to correct almost everything about your game. If you're really uh, particular about how you play a flop, you're going to be really particular about how you play a turn. Just the general. Just, you're going to be thinking a lot more in general. The key is what gets you thinking about the game. It's usually what is good for the game, for your strategy. Is you can chalk almost everything up. Like, oh, nothing loses this much EV here. And the spots that do lose a lot of EV, it's like, do they actually lose a lot of EV versus a computer? And the spots that don't lose a lot of EV, sometimes they lose a lot of EV versus a person. And you're kind of going back and forth in this big mess of poker where people tell you to do so much things because the population does this and so much things do that because everyone does that. But yeah, I don't know what, I don't know where I'm going with that point. But I would say, I, I guess I was saying the most important thing is to make sure you're thinking. Everyone wants to focus on right or wrong, but thinking and grasping stuff is more important than anything. Because the sooner you start thinking, the sooner you start learning. Damn, I'm getting all philosophical with it. And sixes on a 10 is actually going to be a toss. These low pocket pairs out of position versus a wide range, they'll perform as well. In the sense of just, like, yeah, he has king eight off as his bluffs. King eight off flipping versus sixes. Doesn't really, you, you'd almost rather him have aces more often because then you're going to get a stack when you hit a six. When they have a lot of these bullshit hands, it's like, okay, I hit a six, but he has jack eight off suit and the board's, I don't know, something weird. <laughs> Queen nine six, and then the, a three comes on the turn, and it's like unless he bluffs the stack into you, you're not getting paid, you know. And also when you when you show strength, yeah. So sixes and stuff don't really benefit from getting three bet on more often. That's what I was trying to say. These are really low pocket pairs. Same with the pseudo connectors, because these hands are perform well because uh, they can control a part of the bar that like you can beat, you can get paid when they have an over pair. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I'm yapping. I feel like you guys get what I'm saying, though, <laughs> somehow. Maybe I'm just too optimistic. Because sometimes I just know I make no sense. Anyway, I think I'm going to be wrapping up the video here um, so I can get forward to the studying portion. My videos have been running a little too long recently. But, um, yeah, King Deuce is not open. So, anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm out. All right. On to the first hand I'm going to be reviewing, um, starting with the uh, 8 7 suited hand. I'm starting the flop, yeah, as, you, as predicted, you're playing a lot of half pot or 33. Um, I could AI some of this to see a preferred one sizing strategy, as usually I like to simplify to one when they're next to each other. Opponent is pretty much pure continuing with the ace queen suited with the back door. I mean, with the non back door, you uh, prefer it because you're kind of unblocking. It's kind of a. This ace queen suited is usually better for weird reasons. Um, That reason being, um, I guess I can explain it. <laughs> I'm just literally reviewing a hand. Um, that reason being that when you have the uh, double clubs here, or what, what would be the non backdoor double diamonds, um, the double diamonds here still prefers it because you're unblocking the suited hands, like ace jack suited and stuff, that your opponent's more likely to be bluffing here. Whereas if you have the offsuit uh, version, you're kind of blocking the suited version and you're unblocking the bluffs. So you're kind of doing, you're kind of, it's preferred to be committed to one. Okay, I'm going to unblock all the backdoors even though I don't have a straight uh, a flush draw myself. So if you don't actually get the added EV of having the flush draw, you would rather just almost encourage your opponents to be having the flush draw with the with the with the good suit i would say because oh my god if i just hit study does it go back oh it does some people might have seen my training things that i i don't really use the trainer too much it's one perk of gto wizard if it's in the description below the affiliate link um it'll be there i don't think it'll be there yet but um you can look in the description below because i should be getting my affiliate link soon um on the turn here you can see checking a very high frequency i i think you're still better your aces never likes checking um ace king doesn't like checking but a lot of these middling types hands still prefer to check you're gonna have a lot of actual like give ups on this board and stuff so you're gonna be checking at a pretty high frequency it's, your opponent doesn't have enough 7x quite for you to actually really commit to slowing down your your hand and when he checks checks here as you can see he's still checking back his hand pure on the river our hand actually isn't a block bet um, it doesn't really lose any EV, like almost every hand blocks at a frequency. You do prefer to pure trap these types of hands and block the King X, but I just had a feeling in game that this guy was going to find some hands, maybe even over bluff some of these spots. I mean, technically he could have rolled the 99, but I do think that the block bit here is usually over bluffed into. That was my read going into the hand, and uh, that was why I did it. I think in general, in this spot, it's pretty appealing to a uh, 
block the spot is people are usually unbalanced on the turn with their already made value and stuff like this. So you can actually start going thin for value with your King X and start bluffing it. And then uh, because of that, they're going to they're gonna want some very nutted hands in there. Anyway, on to the next video. All right, on to another hand. This was the hand I had King 10 and I squeezed here. I was wrong about one thing in this video. I do say, I think actually from the big one, you do want to be still sizing up. I guess it's still preferred when you are merge here. Here, pre-flop, so you want to actually be going to 14, I was going to 12 and sizing down. I guess the reverse is true. I know from the small blind, or uh, when it's button open small blind flat, the reverse isn't true. But I think the button having in position on you relative to the small blind having in position on you causes you to size up more often. It also depends on the button's flatting range, though. I do believe this button is probably not trapping some of the traps that the solver would have. So I think the smaller sizing is also okay, because he basically just is kind of capped in the spot, whereas in a sim, he, he might have some frequency of some hands that are not as capped. Um, here, when they do call, though, you're, managed, you're mainly playing a B33 strategy. I mean, having less of these types of hands, it really does hit the cutoff range pretty hard. Um, as you can see, it's just... If we were to look at the overall equity of the hand... Um, the cutoff actually has the advantage already on the spot. When he decides to call, he actually has a lot of these middling hands that just hit the board. You obviously have a little bit of the nut advantage, but that still means you you still need to have a, a pretty ch big checking range on the spot. Um, here we check, and our opponent bets into us with the uh, 33. And I will say here, the king-10 and the ace-10 suited are actually uh, pure raising here in this type of node. Um, you prefer to use your queen-10 and your jack-10 as traps, which actually does make a lot of sense. Um, and you prefer to have some of these better flush draws in your raising range, which I can get behind. We actually went for the call here in the spot. And on the river, our opponent kind of makes a mistake with his hand. His hand's preferred as just a, uh, a shove. It doesn't mind the, um, it doesn't really like the B60 sizing, but yeah, hand prefers the all-in sizing. And uh, if you were to go all-in though, just for this, obviously you guys would know a 10X is calling versus that size. Um, if you were to go all in, you would make more of our hands actually indifferent, calling some ace-king. But uh, we probably would have called off the king-10 in the spot. You do have some king-10. Uh, it prefers to call. I can't give myself king-10 diamonds here in this node, but these hands are mixing. And if you were to look at his value range, it actually does have king-10 in itself. So double blocking the king-10 of diamonds value would be pretty nice. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Um, this is going to be the last thing I have to record. I do have to go right now, so... <laughs> Recorded a couple videos in advance. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for what's to come.